Dong Yu should take you back to 2nd and 3rd December 1985. On those two days, the New Straits Times came up with two articles by a reporter by the name of James Ritchie with photographs about the revival that had taken place and about some of the stories, including those pictures of the lights in the sky, uh, water and rice being changed into oil and flour, including various other things about the whole story about what happened in the times of revival. A few years ago, I happened to be in Kuching and I happened to meet the reporter James Ritchie. He told me that he actually gone up there, recorded so many things, recorded and told a story. My conclusion in 1985, after reading those several articles in the New Straits Times, was very, was very simple. There was a big time when the charismatic renewal was beginning to get very hot in Malaysia. And my conclusion was, ah, this is just another of those extreme charismatic claims, exaggerating things. And that was where I left it at that point in 1985. But over the next 25 years or so, I begin to hear about other things. I hear first and foremost about the amazing revival that took place in Barrio among the Calabit in 1973, among the Form 3 boys just before their Form 3 exams. I heard about the Bakalalan story about from 1973 right on to especially 1845, especially through the New Straits Times, but also through talking to other people. Then I also found out that the Christian population of Sarawak went from in 1970 to the year 2010, over a period of 40 years. The Christian population had gone from 19% to 42%. I said, wow, God must be doing something in Sarawak. So I decided that the only right thing for me to do was to go and visit Pakalalang and see for myself what actually happened. And that we did that in February 2011. I went there, up there with a friend and another pastor, Lun Bawang pastor, jo John Baru, who was working with the Methodist Church, and myself, three of us went. Now, what happened then was, after hearing about all these things and about the Mao Mode prayer meeting, I decided that I need to go up to Mao Mode. So in July 2013, I went with a group of friends I got up for two reasons. One was because I was on sabbatical, I had a bit more time, I wanted to go for a hike, and I always enjoy walking up the mountains. But more importantly, I was seeking a lot of reading about what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And I, I was conscious of his calling in a certain area. But I said, Lord, I need your confirmation. I did not say, I did not know how God was going to confirm it, but I said, Lord, I'm going to go up there to spend, spend time in prayer and please give me your confirmation about what I'm expected to do. Uh, the meeting started at about 7, if I remember correctly, or 6.30, but I started, decided to start taking photographs at about 7.40. The first one, photo, one or two photographs was a little bit blurred because I was had, because I, do, I shook the camera. But what shocked me was the next few photographs was blurred. All sorts of pattern there. And I said to myself, hey, something wrong with my camera. Did I, it's, a, it's, it's a lens crack. And then I had a closer look. And I saw that these patterns was not caused by a crack lens, but it was a very regular pattern. And the, some of the patterns were similar to the patterns that were of the, found in a photograph that was taken in way back in 1984 and 1985 that we do have today. And I continue to take the photographs from different angles. And I realized that God was manifesting himself in a very special way. And that manifestation went from about 7.42 to about 8.02. In fact, you can see the date and the time imprinted on the photographs that you will look at when you look at them. Those photographs took me completely by surprise. I had gone up to the mountain to say and say to God, Lord, I needed some confirmation from you. And those photographs came to me, and that was God's confirmation about what I asked of Him. 
But the point I want to make is this, that when you seek God, God always shows up in ways which we don't expect. Don't tell him what to do. Just tell him what you need and he'll show himself. And that was what happened. God showed himself to me in a way that I did not expect anything at all. The first revival first touched for Kalalan in 1973 when the we see when the preaching team came from Barrio. For the next 10 years, Pa'agong was a leader of revival. Together with some of the people at Pak Musa, Ibu Maria, they would go from home to home, telling people to obey God, to repent of sin, to get rid of all the things that they got from the Bomo, to spend time in prayer, to re- respond to the Holy Spirit, prompting, to be reconciled. After 10 years of pastoral work, where the villagers were challenged to put their life in order, then God spoke to them, I'm going to manifest my glory. Because the people of Bakalala had sought to live holy lives, over 10 years, God came and manifested His glory. If you want to go and seek God, your heart must be right. You must be ready for God to manifest Himself. As our, our hearts pure. In the book of Hebrews, it says, without holiness, no one can see God. But if you're one who wants to go to Mahmoud to seek God, go with prepared, go with a pure heart, go with a humble attitude, say, Lord, I want to hear you. You'll find that God will manifest Himself to you in ways that might be totally unexpected. God bless you. Amen.